folks, if you cannot hear me, okay, let me know. Because some people told me last time after lecture they had difficulties understanding me in terms of the volume. So we can solve that problem with this jacking up the volume. If you can't understand me because of my accent or because of my slurring of the words, I cannot help you with that. <laughs> Important information. Midterm one, next week, next Friday. Time flies. Next week on Friday is the midterm, October 26th. Where? Here. What time? This time. Two o'clock. What is it about? Everything we talk about. Easy. Um, next Tuesday night, I'll post a practice exam for you to look at so you can have an idea what kind of things you may expect. This is a practice exam. It's a special service for you, but a special service does not include the answer to the practice exam because then it's not a practice exam anymore. Okay, so I want you to regard this as a p.m. Next Thursday night means the week, a week from now. Uh, in this particular auditorium, which is uh, not this one, this is physical sciences, this is uh, humanities uh, lecture hall, 100A, I'll do an in-class review session. Okay? So you're welcome to join us. It's not mandatory by any means, but if you feel like the e on the eve of the midterm, you'd like to have some extra face time or if you questions and you want to discuss a couple of examples, then that's the time to come to that classroom to discuss. Okay, so I'll give you more information on Friday and what we'll do with the lectures next week. All right, we will move on with the next topic, which will be on midterm, so please pay attention, and that's about organic molecules. We introduce Compounds, we started with ionic compounds, and then we moved on to compounds that have covalent linkages, or covalent compounds, or just simply molecules. And a very important class of these molecules are organic molecules. We know them, they are all around us. For instance, this is chock full of organic molecules. Here's one. 
looks like a molecule, and if I draw this in a, in a particular way, in terms of uh, particular atoms and their bonds, it looks like this. This is a sort of line structure. This is vitamin C, very important molecule, keeps you healthy. You don't need that. You don't need these things. After a while, you get sick. Because you don't need vitamin C, your body cannot make vitamin C itself, and you need to take it in through the consumption of these kind of materials. Okay? This molecule is an organic molecule. What is an organic molecule exactly? The definition of an organic molecule is a molecule that contains carbon and a couple of other elements. Typically, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and halogens. Okay? But the basic, basic ingredient is the carbon atom. Covalent compounds with a carbon atom. So here's a le oh sorry. Here's a, a person called Friedrich Brüller. And he claimed to be the first person that made an organic molecule. Okay? It's a very interesting uh, claim, but it's true that before that time, before this particular experiment that we're going to discover in two seconds, people thought that organic molecules could not be made by man. Okay? Organic molecules were made by nature, whatever you want to call that, but man could not make that. That was a firm belief. Okay, and so this person, Freddy, says, well, I'm not quite sure that's true. Let me experiment a little bit in my lab. He took this, okay, which is an inorganic compound. And then he was heating this up, and he made this compound, which we would classify as organic. It has uh, carbon here, and it's a neutral compound, a neutral molecule. All the bonds are covalently linked. That means this is an organic molecule. Right? So it's called urea, basic ingredient of urine. Okay. So he was very happy and he joked about it that he made basically urine. Okay? He made urine in the lab. He was extremely ecstatic. Okay, you can read this quote and feel free to laugh if you want to. You don't have to. But uh, this is the birth of organic chemistry. The first organic molecule to be synthesized was the urine molecule. Alright, so why are organic molecules made of carbon. Why is carbon such an essential element? Everything to do with the properties of the element carbon. Okay, the atom, the atom, the carbon atom has particular properties that make it an extremely suitable candidate for forming a wide variety of very stable robust molecules. Carbon uh, uh, likes to make bonds, and these bonds are typically covalent, which means strong, a strong bond. Strong bonds mean, means Molecules that are very stable, they don't fall apart. And that's good, because if you want to build something, you don't want, to, you don't want your molecules to fall apart. Okay? So carbon does that, it makes these very strong covalent bonds. It also can make covalent bonds not only with itself, but okay, with other carbon atoms, but also with a wide variety of other elements. Okay? So you can make a whole flurry of different types of molecules from these very simple principles. So uh, these uh, bonds can make structures that have very interesting geometries, which again contribute to the stability of the molecule. Here's the benzene ring, which has this hexagonal structure. This is a typical alkane, uh, which has a particular kind of like zigzag kind of structure. You see here another circular structure, and, and even these kind of helical structures. Carbon supports it all. Okay? So the bonding is very unique, wide variety of possibilities and stability. So carbon is a very good candidate to form these uh, organic molecules. This is a list that is reminiscent of what you've seen in high school, I hope. These are the alkanes. Okay? These are very basic organic molecules composed of carbon atoms and hydrogen atoms. Oh, you had a question, right? Yeah. What was the question? Sorry. Uh, I will, then you can, you're allowed to, you have to use a calculator, frankly, because if you do calculations. I will give you very precise instructions on what you can <coughs> take with you and not uh, on Friday. Okay, so any specifics, uh, please ask me on Friday. All right, so this list is something that is, uh, I hope you've seen uh, in your high school chemistry classes. Uh, we will not very actively use this, but please, know these structures and be familiar with them. So when I say, for instance, the word heptane, 
you should not be completely confused, like, what's going on? Okay, heptane is an organic molecule with seven carbons. Okay, that's kind of like the thing you would like to remember. There's a question actually in homework three about these alkanes, just to let you know that these structures, uh, you know, you should be able to work with them. Okay, now, there are common bonding patterns in these organic molecules. And this is something that is very useful to keep in mind. So the hydrogen atom, when it's part of an organic molecule, always have one, has one bond. Okay? So we indicate that with this covalent linkage. So the number of bonds is one. Carbon has four. Okay? The number of bonds that carbon has is four. It can have four bonds in this geometry. Okay, that means four different bonds, single bonds, four single bonds, or two single bonds and one double bond, a total of four again, or a triple bond and a single bond, also a total of four. In all cases, a total of four bonds. It's a very generic trend, and therefore we typically say carbon has four bonds. There are exceptions. There are exceptions. But for all intents and purposes, you can assume carbon has four bonds. Okay? And it also says lone pairs, zero, zero. So these atoms have no lone pairs. Here is an atom, an element that does have a lone pair. Yes? Uh, yes, it can. Carbon can also form two bonds on this side and two bonds on this side that are both double bonds. That's possible. That's possible. It's a little exotic. It's very exotic, but it's possible. So let's move to uh, uh, nitrogen. These two dots mean two electrons that do not participate in a bond. They just sit there. Okay? And these guys are bonds. So uh, nitrogen likes to have one, two, three bonds. One, two, three, or a triple bond. One, two, three. In all cases, three covalent bonds. And two electrons that are sitting there are not bonded or anything. These two electrons together are called a lone pair. You may have heard of this. We are not actually requiring you to know this or you know, to draw these things. I'm just going to point out that they are really there. And that later on, we have to draw Lewis properties in chem or A, they will be important. For our course, we're not going to attach you extensively on the presence of lone pairs. So don't worry about it right now. Oxygen likes to have two bonds. One, two either two uh, single bonds or a double bond. It has one, two lone pairs. Okay? Here again, one, two lone pairs. So these are patterns that you'll find in organic molecules. Over and over again. So recognizing these patterns will be extremely useful if you have to draw an organic molecule. For instance, if you draw an organic molecule where the oxygen has four bonds, I'm going to take my red marker and make a beautiful line through your structure, okay? Because that's wrong. Oxygen doesn't do that. Fluorine is a halogen, that's why it's a halogen element, like chlorine and bromine and ionine. It likes to form one covalent bond, typically through carbon in organic structures, and it has one, two, three long pairs. Fluorine does not have two bonds or three, it has one. Yes? Can we determine how many lone pairs there are? Well, you will learn about that later on, so we're not going into detail. At this juncture, I'm just telling you that halogens like fluorine, including chlorine, iodine, bromine, have three. Okay? Okay, but there's a reason for that, and, but before we can discuss that, we have to talk about electric configurations, and then it will become clear. All right, so here's a chemical formula, C3H4. Okay, which means this is a molecule, an organic molecule, which has three carbons and four hydrogen atoms. Now, does this chemical formula fully specify what kind of molecule I'm looking at? The answer is yes. Okay, that means no in Russian. Here is one incarnation, and this is 
actually, uh, for the person that just asked about the double bonds, you have, you have one carbon that has two double bonds on each side, or one double bond on each side, total of two. One, two, three carbons, one, two, three, four hydrogen atoms. This is basically C3H4. However, there's another one, this one for instance, one, two, three, in which case there's a triple bond between these two carbons. One, two, three, four. Four hydrogen once again. These are two molecules that both have this particular formula. Alright? So it makes sense at this point to be able to discriminate between the two. Is there a way in which we can write down this chemical formula and be a little bit more specific about what kind of molecule we're talking about? The answer is yes, you can do it. And we call that way of writing the so-called condensed structural structural formula. Condensed structural formula. There it is. So how does it work? You start with the, the, uh, the, the uh, chemical structure on the left. Okay, so you look on the left, just like you read a word, and you see okay, the first chemical group is a C with two H's attached. Okay, that's a CH2 functional unit. So I'm going to write that down, CH2. The next one is a carbon. It doesn't have any extra bonds except a bond with its neighbors, which are also carbons. So I'm just going to write a C here. And then the last group here is again a CH2. Okay, so CH2, right there. So CH2, C, CH2 captures this structure. Let's do this one. The first group on this side, on the left, is a CH3. Okay, CH3. The second one is a single C, and the last one is a C with an H. So this is CH3, C, CH. Okay? Now, each of these carbons has four bonds. Each hydrogen has one bond. Okay? We have to remember that. So let's practice that a little bit. Here I have a condensed structural formula. Can I draw the structure? Or can I sketch the structural formula of this condensed structural formula? Well, this is a structure that has a CH3 unit all the way to the left, then a CH, CH, and then it ends again with a CH3. So let me, let me try to do this. Here's a CH3 unit all the way to the left, followed by a CH right there another CH, and a CH3 to the right. Importantly, there is a double bond. How do I know that there is a double bond? Yes, each carbon needs four bonds. If each carbon here has only one H attached to it, okay, one here, and this bond on the left with the, to this uh, neighboring C, and on the right with this neighboring C, which means one, two, three, it needs four. It needs an extra bond. So where's the double bond for this C? Is it on that side or that side? It must be on this side. Because this C here has already four bonds. It cannot accept another one. So this double bond must be between these two guys. So it's a little bit of a puzzle, right? You have to use the rule that there are four bonds for each part. Yes? You don't exactly know at this point. You can assume that, I'll, I'll tell you when they're not, but typically they're all in here. Okay, so the questions we ask you, the structure we ask you about are typical, typically linear structures. This is also a linear structure. CH3, CHO, how do you draw that? Okay, here it is. CH3, that's the first unit, and then the second unit is a C with an O and an H. The H is always single bonded. The O is bonded to the, to the C with a double bond. That's a common pattern. Okay? One, two, three, four, the carbon has four bonds. I'm done. Okay? You can draw those uh, non-binding electrons if you want. You don't have to. All right, another two. CH3, CO, CH3. I can see immediately this is a symmetric molecule, right? It has on each end, it has a CH3 unit. And in the middle, there's a CO unit. 
How do I draw that? There it is. CH3 to the left, CH3 to the right. In the middle, CO. The O likes to have double bonds, <coughs> carbon, like this. So, one, two, three, four, a total of four bonds for this particular carbon. But this must be the right structure. How about this one over here? This is also a symmetric molecule. It has CH3 all the way to the left, the CH3 all the way to the right. And in the middle, a CH2 unit, O, CH2. How do you do that? Here it is. CH3, and then a CH2. This is a CH2 unit, right here. Okay, it's a C with two uh, H's uh, attached to it. And then an oxygen attached to the carbon. And this oxygen is also attached to the next carbon, right here. So it's sandwiched between two carbons. Right? If it's sandwiched between two carbons, it must have two single bonds on each side. You cannot have a double bond on one end. Two single bonds with this particular oxygen atom. And then, since this is a symmetric molecule, the pattern is repeating itself. CH2 and a CH3. Okay? All right. Now, this is all good and well. Okay, so writing the natural formula is extremely helpful in specifying what kind of molecules we are talking about. However, things can get really complicated. For a much, much larger molecule, the conventional formula can be very long and becomes extremely hard to interpret. So, for very large structures, it would be very helpful to have an even better way of writing this molecule. And the way to do that is by sketching the molecule as a line structure. Okay, so let's look at this particular guy here. This is a CH3, one unit on the left, CH2, 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 CH3. A pretty long condensed structure formula. Okay? It gets a little messy. So if I do the following, I start here at this point which I say is a carbon atom. So each little point or kink is a carbon atom. I don't explicitly write the carbon atom. I just assume every time I see a point, an endpoint, or a kink, that is a carbon atom. Right? Each corner point, each endpoint, is a carbon atom. Actually, that's a rule right here. One, two, so this one must be the CH3. It has one, two, three H's attached. It's not written, okay? So the hydrogens are not explicitly written in this line structure. So how do I know that, that they are there? Because you assume that there are enough hydrogens attached to each carbon atom such that each carbon atom has four bonds, okay? This carbon atom here only has a bond to that side to another carbon atom, which means it has three bonds left. Those three bonds left are hydrogen bonds. Sorry, a bonds to hydrogen. So three CH bonds. So this is a CH3. This one here, carbon atom, has one, two bonds with other carbon atoms. It has two bonds left. Those are bonds with hydrogen. So two bonds with hydrogen. This is a CH2. This is also a CH2. That's a CH2. That's a CH2. And this guy here, again, is a CH3. So this little wiggle here summarizes this entire molecule. Okay? Let's count. CH3, right here. CH2, this one. CH2, there. CH2, there. CH2, there. CH3, and four. Okay? Oops, too fast. Here's another one. And talk about circular structures. The only circular structure you have to be able to recognize is that six-fold symmetry structure which pertains to benzene, benzene rings. C6H6, this is a solution, okay? Each point is a carbon atom, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then there's double bonds alternating, one there, one there, one there. So each carbon atom has one, two, three bonds. Three bonds already, one bond left. That's the bond with the with the hydrogen atom. It means that each one has one, 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 one bond with hydrogen. That means a total of six hydrogens. Right? So 
C6, H6, <coughs> this is a solution of that chemical form. Okay, let's try try out if we understand that. So let's draw the structure of the following condensed structural form. CH3, CH, CH, CH3. Okay? CH3 is an endpoint. And then I have two CHs in the middle, so two carbon atoms. And then it ends again in a CH3. So what I have is something like this. Endpoint, one of these CHs, another CH, and then an endpoint again, CH3. A double bond, once again, because this carbon atom here has one hydrogen bond, sorry, it's, it's bonded to one hydrogen, okay, <coughs> and to one side of the carbon, one side with another carbon. It has three bonds, it needs one more. There must be a double bond. There must be a double bond. The same holds for the next guy, so these two carbons won't be share a double bond. Every time you see this repetition, CH, CH, next to each other, you know there's a double bond between those C's, okay? Because each C has only one ligand, so to speak. It only has one bond to something else, in this case, hydrogen. Okay, let's go to this one. CH3, CH2, O, CH2, CH3. There it is. Why? CH3, this one. CH2, this guy. Oxygen, right there, sandwiched between the two carbons. Then a CH2 unit, that's this little kink right there. There's two bonds and then two H's not drawn. And then an endpoint, which is CH3. Okay, how about this one here? It's a circular structure. It's not benzene because each point here has two hydrogens. What I do is I just uh, leave out the carbons, just make a little corner there, and also leave out the hydrogen explicitly. But you end up with this. Okay. So this is not benzene, right? Because in the ring, there are no double bonds. Which means each quarter point here has two hydrogens attached to it. OK. Pretty good. We're not done yet, of course. Let's draw this one, a little bit more complicated. We're going to ramp it up a little bit. CH3, CH2, CH2, C, Cl2. And then CH2, CHO. So I'm starting to recognize patterns in groups, OK? A CH3 group, a CH2 group, a CH2 group. C, Cl2 is like CH2. Instead of the hydrogen, I just have a Cl. Chlorine, okay? So this is the same kind of corner point, uh, but I have chlorines as opposed to hydrogens. And you'll see what it look, what it look, what it look like. It looks a little different than if you have hydrogens. CH2 is one of those corner points again. And this, CHO, I recognize now as a C bonded to a hydrogen and double bonded to an oxygen. So this is it, right? CH3, CH2, CH2, C, Cl2, 2 Cl. The Cl's are not like hydrogens. They have to be explicitly drawn. Okay? Only the hydrogens are left out. Only the hydrogens attached to a carbon are left out. So these guys are drawn. There's a carbon right there. It's bonded to a Cl here, bonded to a Cl there. And then on this side of carbon, that side of carbon. Okay? This is a CH2 unit again. This is a carbon with one hydrogen, which is not drawn and then a double bond to an oxygen. All right? Whoa! We get longer and longer. Let's do this. CH3, CH2, CH2, CHF, okay, which is very similar to this, CCl2. A C with two extra bonds, one H and one C, uh, one, uh, in this case, fluorine. Okay, and on the other side of this carbons. CH2, CH2, and then CN. CN, we haven't seen that. So we'll see what that amounts. Here it is. CH3, CH2, CH2. C with one F, the other one is H, not drawn. CH2, CH2, C with an N. One bond here, must be a triple bond between the N and the C. We have four bonds of carbon. 
the triple bond and nitrogen is a common pattern, so we're all good. All right, how about this puppy? CH3, CH, CH. Hey, CH, CH, I recognize now as something that has a double bond between the two carbons, okay? So, and then a CH2, CH, CL, and CH3. Looks like this, okay? CH3, here's a double bond between the two C's. It has one H each. CH2, this is a C with one CL and one H. It's the unit right there, okay? The H is not wrong. Okay. This is a CH3 N group. All right. Doing pretty well. So this is something you should be able to do. Draw these structures from the condensed structural formula. But what you should also be able to do is to look at the line structure and determine the chemical formula. Okay? What does that mean? Well, I can draw this for you. And then you should be able to tell me what is, you know, what is this? What is the chemical formula? So it goes like, like this. I'm going to count the number of carbon atoms, the number of C, uh, uh, hydrogen atoms, <coughs> the number of oxygen, and in this case, chlorine atoms. I'm going to write the chemical formula. <coughs> Here we go. One, two, three, four. C4. Okay? And then the number of hydrogens. So be mindful now. Okay? You've got to determine how many hydrogens are there at each corner point, and each end point? There's three here. There's one there. There's one there. Don't forget this guy. That's a hydrogen too. Okay? There's one, sorry, there's three there. This is an end point. So three plus three, and then another three. That's nine, H9. A common mistake is that people typically forget about this H here. Please count it. I'm not done. There's one uh, oxygen here and one chlorine. So this is the chemical formula of this structure. Let's move on to this guy. One, two, three, four. Four carbons. Each one here has two bonds to a hydrogen. It means two, two, three, two. That's eight hydrogens plus this one is nine. Total of nine hydrogens. So that's C4, H9, one oxygen, and then one hydrogen. So C4H9ON. What order? The order is typically C first, H second, oxygen next, and then anything else that comes after. Okay? All right, how about this guy over here? But you have to be mindful. This is an endpoint, one carbon here, one carbon there, there. Each point here is a carbon. This is also a carbon right there. Okay, the little stick here is a carbon right there, CH3 units. Okay? So let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. C9 again. Alright? And I count the number of hydrogen atoms. There's three here, two there, there's one there, two there, one there, three there, none here, none here, here is one, and here is one. That's a total of 16. In addition, I have two oxygens, O2. So the formula here, C9, H16, oxygen 2. Okay, so you just, this is really just being meticulous about it and check yourself several times, and you'll be able to pull this off. Okay. Uh, oh, there's one more here. This is, a, this is a benzene kind of structure, as you can see. One, two, three, four, five, six carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six hydrogens and one oxygen. So this is C6H6O. Oh, they get more and more interesting. Okay? But don't be the, you know, discouraged. It's the same mechanism. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. C8. This corner point has one, two, three, four bonds, so there's no H's there, no H's there. One here, one here, one here, one here. Okay? And one there, one there. So that's C8, H6, one oxygen. One hydrogen there, two, three, four, five, six. 
All right. Something similar, but now with some uh, nitrogen incorporated. You do the counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. C7, H6, N2. Don't forget this H right there. Okay? It counts. You want to see the hydrogens? One here. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. My goodness. Now here is a example from an exam from a couple of years back. I just took an exam from a couple of years back and I just copied it first. And it's right here. Draw the line structure of the following four lines. Okay, this is just to get you guys excited. <laughs> Alright? Let's see if we can do this. Now what the hell is this? <laughs> CH3 3. We have to know how to fortify select of this. CH3 is between parentheses, it means it acts like one thing. Okay? And there's three of it. And those three things are going through this carbon right here. So this carbon is a carbon with one CH3 there, one CH3 there, and one CH3 there. Right? So I'll show you, I'll show you what it looks like, and you're going to love it. It looks like this. That is the carbon. That's the carbon. That's this one over here. CH3 right there, CH3 right there, CH3 right there. So this carbon has four bonds. There's no additional hydrogen. Right? Then the CH2 unit right there. CH, CH, that's the unit that we recognize as a double bond between two carbons. The CH2 unit is just a corner point and a BR. So this C here has two hydrogens and one BR. Okay? One bromine. This is not a carbon at this end. This is a bromine bond to this carbon. Okay? Okay, now the uh, example from an exam. Give the molecular formula of the following line structure. So this now we have to be counting. Looks very similar to the previous slide. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Where did I start? Here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. C ten, H eight. One oxygen. Okay. Let me show you what the uh, hydrogens are. Here, not there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay? Yes? Why isn't it odd when you said not there? Why is there no hydrogen right there? <coughs> Who knows? Yes, you. Uh, the carbon already has four bonds? Yes, the carbon has four bonds. But count. One, two, three. Well, it's a different guy over here. Four. Right? Four bonds, no extra hydrogen. Question? The H's? In, in this one here? Okay. One here, one there. Why is there one? Because this is a carbon with three bonds. The other one must be a hydrogen. One hydrogen, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Those corner points do not have hydrogen as we just discussed. Okay? Now, these things, these line structures, are absolutely ubiquitous in any form of chemistry you will be engaged in in the rest of the world. Okay? So, if you open a book, if you go to study biology, uh, chemistry, this is how you're going to pick it. The structure is going to come very much The only way you can pick it properly is the two line structures. So, you have to be able to work with these things. Okay, here's an example why line structures are extremely important. These are so-called pheromones for bees. Okay? Two molecules that look alike. They look alike a lot. In fact, the only difference is location. Oops. Somebody allergic to bees. <laughs> this OH group shifts position only one spot. Goes from here to there. That's the difference. Very subtle. Very subtle. The the chemical formula is almost the same. So from the formula itself, you don't see any difference. You have to draw the line structure to appreciate the difference between these two molecules. This is the pheromone of the queen bee, the pheromone of the worker bee. Small changes in the molecular structure, majestic differences in ranking. Okay? 
the worker bee has to do very different kind of things than the queen bee. So this is really a beautiful example of subtle chemical differences that are depicted in the light structure. Another light example is this. This is uh, a structure that you can ex extract from plants, particular plants. And there's nothing really too special about it. But if you take this thing off, OK, and you oxidize it, you get this structure. Small change, but dramatic differences in appearance. This thing here appears blue. This molecule is completely colorless. Okay, so the line structure nicely indicates where the changes took place. And it can help to explain why this is a colorful molecule and this one is not. It has to do with the number of double bonds that are uh, very close to each other that actually clarifies where something that is very colorful and something else is not. This thing can actually uh, form another structure that takes one of its neighbors and bonds to it through this very interesting bridge, the double bond bridge. And this is what we call indigo. Beautiful blue that some people like to smear in their face. <laughs> Another example of the line structures are actually the right way to depict molecules. Yes, what? Why do you want to be oh, I'm sorry, man. It's, uh, I mean, don't want to be, you know, taking sides here. This is chemistry, okay? This is chemistry. This is the molecule I'm talking about. I'm not talking about this guy. This guy took a lot of these things. That, that's the point. <laughs> Okay, so this is testosterone. You see, rather complex structure. In order to appreciate the details of this molecule, you have to know what the molecule looks like. The line structure helps you interpret that. You see another one. This is very close. You see, this is also a sterile, a steroid. But some small changes here define that this is a slightly differently behaving kind of molecule. Okay? Another example. This is also uh, from the same family. These are. Uh, the, um, not the male version, but the female version of the same hormone. Uh, it's uh, SRDL. And uh, you know, we, can, we can make things very nicely in the last few days. And this is actually the component that is used in the pill to cool women's bodies that they are uh, you know, receptive for uh, all kinds of things. Okay. So now, interestingly, uh, there are people that are looking for molecules that can do the same thing for men. Okay, so this is a structure, beautiful line structure, that has apparently the effect of suppressing sperm count in males. So if you're interested in using this, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's it. See you